Okay, this is your module lesson 4.2. So we are mainly focusing over story structure. So story structure is how a story is written. Stories often have similar structure. Authors organize the plot in a way that will entertain readers. So what is plot? Plot is the top of the story, what happens, okay? So the beginning, the events in the beginning include a conflict or a problem that the character faces, right? There's a problem. And then when it goes in the middle, the events in the middle show the character trying to solve the conflict or the problem. In the end, the events at the end include the resolution or how the characters solve the conflict. How are they solving the conflict? How, is, how are they fixing the problem? Look for evidence or clues in the story to describe a story's plot. Okay, so we look for evidence or clues in the story or in the text to describe a story's plot. So we're going to read Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs by Mo Williams. Does that sound familiar? Goldilocks and the Three what? What is it normally in the what? Very good. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So let's see how this story is different from that story. Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs, in the th as retold by Mo Willems. Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs, as retold by Mo... Mo Willems. Okay, here we go. Once upon a time, there were three dinosaurs. Papa Dinosaur, Mama Dinosaur, and some other dinosaur who happened to be visiting from Norway. Oh, this must be the other dinosaur, right? Yeah. It says, home sweet dinosaur home. One day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, positioned their chairs just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding at varying temperatures. So what did they make this time? Chocolate pudding! Chocolate pudding. That's how it was different from last time. It was oatmeal, right? Or it's porridge. Sorry, it's porridge. Very good. But here, they're at different temperatures. Let's look at the picture. We have ice cubes, so one of them is really cold. We have a thermometer that shows it's a, uh, red, so that means it must be very hot. And then we have a third one that's, prob that's empty. Oh, boy, said Papa Dinosaur in his loud, booming voice. It is finally time to leave and go to the, uh, someplace else. <laughs> Yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens by our unlocked home while we are, uh, someplace else. Look at their smile. Does it, what is it, who can raise their hand and tell me? What do you think? What do you think that place that they're going, what do you think of their picture? What do you think, JC? That they might be going to the grandma's house, okay. You think they're just that innocent? Look at the smile on their faces, Destin. What do you think? Really? To me, their laugh looks evil, doesn't it? Okay. Christian? They do look scary. They look evil. Look at the evil laugh. <laughs> And then, oh, and then they say, maybe some child will come in because they left the door unlocked on purpose. So what do you think, J Jacob? Okay. What do you think, Amariah? Maybe they're going to go hunt. Very good. Okay, one more. What do you think, Renaya? Okay, maybe they're got there. It's a plan. Very good. Maybe they're gonna try to catch her, and they're waiting for her, right? Because they left that door unlocked, and they're laughing very evilly. It looks like they have a plan. Do you agree, Rena? Yeah. Do you want to add anything, Rena? What? Good. They think that, that Rena said that she thinks that Goldilocks is gonna come into the house, and they're gonna be waiting for her. They're gonna eat her. Let's see. Is that is that what's gonna happen? Horror, horror, horse, hook. 
Then the other dinosaur made a loud noise that sounded like a big, evil laugh, but was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. The three dinosaurs went someplace else, and were definitely not hiding in the woods, waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. They were definitely not hiding in the woods. Right? So it looks like it's a what? It's a trap. Look, it looks like, it looks like they're going to trap her. Or they're trying to trap her. Very good. All right, let's go ahead and uh, continue to read. Let me move this that way. Okay, here we go. Uh-oh, did it log me out? Sure enough, five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came traipsing along. Just so poorly supervised, that means nobody was really watching her, right? Where is she? There she is. Look, it says 0.2 miles to, and then it says very nice house, and then it has an X on trap. So it, sh it did say 0.2 miles to trap. But now they x out trap and they put very nice house. And then here it says getting closer. All right, let's keep reading. Then the forest boomed with what could have been a dinosaur yelling, Gotcha! But I'm pretty sure it was just the wind. The loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded kind of like, Be patient, Papa Dinosaur. The trap is not yet sprung. Well, that could have been a rock falling. Or squirrel. Could it be a rock falling or a squirrel? No. no, it's him. That's what he's saying. He's saying, be patient. What do you guys think they're going to do with her? Eat her. Eat her. Look how he's licking his lips. Mmm, they're hungry. He has his tongue out. He's like, man, that little girl looks delicious. All right. Either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. For example... Goldilocks never listened to warnings about the dangers of barging into strange, enormous houses. So as soon as Goldilocks came across a strange, enormous house, she barged right in. She barged right welcome, into the house. Tee -hee. Look, it says, welcome, tee -hee. Why do you guys think it says tee in parentheses? Uh, Rena? It's a dinosaur's house, and he's laughing because she walked, she walked right into their trap. Does she have good manners? No. no. You don't go into a house, just barge into a house. Inside, Goldilocks immediately smelled the three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Mmm, said Goldilocks. That chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way up to the top of that counter. Then Goldilocks noticed a very tall ladder that just happened to be there and certainly wasn't left on purpose. Was it really left on purpose? Yeah. It sure was. They wanted her to get up there. Goldilocks climbed up the ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls of chocolate pudding. The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but Goldilocks ate it all anyway, because, hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? The second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold, but who cares about temperature when you've got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. The third bowl of chocolate pudding was just right, but Goldilocks was on such a roll by now, she hardly noticed. She ate them all anyway, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she didn't care. She ate the hot one, the cold one, and the just right one. But she didn't even notice it was just right. And she rolled onto the next one because she was probably full, right? Soon Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons, which, by the way, are totally not the favorite things in the whole world for hungry dinosaurs. So she was like one of those chocolate-wrapped can those candies that have chocolate inside of it? Tired and groggy, Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room. So she climbed down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. The first chair was too tall. The second chair was too tall. 
but the third chair was too tall. Goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chair, so she hiked over to the bedroom. When she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big. What is going on around here? groaned the exhausted girl. The bears that live here must be nuts. Right now she feels like uh, something must be the matter. Just then, the room filled with a loud, booming noise that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few more minutes, and she'll be asleep. Delicious, chocolate-filled little girl bonbons are yummier when they're rested. Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything had to hear that. Who do you guys think this bed is for? Papa. Papa. What about this one? Mama. What about this one? Mama. The little Scottish boy. Look, he has a little Scottish flag on there. Okay, very good. Or girl or dinosaur or whatever. All right, so look. They're looking at her through the, mar the windows, and what are they saying? There they are. What are they saying? They're saying, should we go eat her now? No, they're saying let her rest because they taste more delicious when they're rested. Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. Hey, she told herself, this isn't some bear's house. This is some dinosaur's house. Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran to the back door and got out of there. She ran out of there. Look, it says home sweet dinosaur home. That's how you know She at first thought it was bears. Just then, a loud plane flew by, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling, Now! Or, Charge! Or the Norwegian expression for, Chewy Bonbon Time! Suddenly, and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door, but they were too late. Why were they too late? What happened? Very good. She ran out of the back door. Goldilocks was gone, and all that was left in the house were three disappointed dinosaurs. The end. Aww. Look, he has his hand on his stomach. Oh, I really wanted to eat her. And the moral is, what is the plot or the moral? If you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. And the moral is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. Right? So, oh, she left the, the story with the dinosaurs, and now she went to the story with three... Bears. Bears. Oh, this is the right story? Yeah. Oh, Goldilocks. Lock the back door. And the moral for dinosaurs is, lock the back door. So what did the dinosaurs learn from this? Lock the back door and it's really trap her in. Very good. Okay, awesome. That was a really good story. I like that story. So what we're going to do is we on your in your writing notebooks you are going to tell me what happened in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end of the story. Beginning, middle, and end. So um it would it would be kind of like this graphic organizer, but we're not gonna do it in a graphic organizer. We're just gonna do it inside of our reading notebooks. So let me wait till it opens so I can show you. It is this one. Okay, so. So right here, it's, it's going to be like this one, okay? What happened in the beginning? What was the conflict in the middle? What were the events in the end? What is the resolution? Okay, so you're going to do that in your reading notebooks, and you're going to tell, and you're going to fill that out for me in complete sentences. Make sure you write the title of the story at the top and your name, and you're going to turn it into me. Um, it was Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs. Okay? All right, this is not in your textbook, so you're not going to find it in your textbook. This is only online. All right, guys, have fun learning. If you have any questions, do let me know. 
Bye.